Now, I know many of you are skeptical about buying items to boost your own luck. Well, I've got news for you. There's absolutely no need to buy any objects or trinkets to boost your energy or boost your feng shui because feng shui starts with what you already have around you, your natural environment. It's about harmonizing yourself with the surrounding environment. It's about finding the qi and connecting to this qi flow to benefit you or to serve your goals. I want to take you around your home and show you which areas that you can enhance or could adjust to change your life. All you have to do is get up and do it. Still worried? Well, keep this in mind. You never know if you've never tried. I can't wait to get started, but first things first, if you're not yet a subscriber, you know what to do. Hit on the subscribe button and click on the bell icon. Otherwise, I'll use my sharing gun and put you under a spell. It might sound like a silly question, but most people don't really understand what qi is. Well, it's the backbone of feng shui. Qi is the life force that shapes and nurtures and governs all living things. I'm sure you all are somewhat aware that Qi can be skewed positively or negatively. The polarities are known as Sing Qi, or auspicious Qi, or Sa Qi, or negative Qi. And it is a naturally occurring phenomenon, meaning it cannot be manufactured, no lights, colors, lucky charms, will be able to produce or generate Qi to enhance your life or luck. Now, you might just be wondering where and how you can find and use qi. Well, qi is the universal life force energy that circulates and permeates the world that we live in. So look around you now. Experience this. It is everywhere. I'll start you right here in the living room. The internal bright hall is the term we use to describe the space that is immediately after your main door or main entrance. Now, this is an important area for qi to be collected or qi flow to be residing in inside of your house. It comes from the external to the internal. So this is the first checkpoint on your feng shui. I'll advise you to keep this area clutter-free, spacious and clear so that you can usher more sing qi or prosperous energy into your home from the external environment. Now, you might want to throw open the windows to brighten up this area as well, just in case. It is important that your bright hall, the technical term for the space interior of your main door, to be brightly lit, especially with natural lighting. Now, I'm not talking about using artificial lights here, okay? Now, some people may say, I want to put some lamps here, put some crystals here. Natural sunlight is all we need. Sunlight itself is a natural life force energy and should be allowed in and not overshadowed by thick greenery. Now, I don't know about you, but I think large plants should stay outside of the house because they could easily block sunlight from entering this very important space of your home. If you get this place covered in the dark, it looks like a cave, or if you walk into the main door and you smell a musky smell, chi flow is impeded and it's not good. This is something that you don't want to happen in your home. Remember, there's no harm trying this. You've got nothing to lose and a lot to gain. All you need to do is to make sure that your bright hall, the space that is immediately after your main door, is spacious and the chi flow is smooth. Now for the kitchen. Obviously, food is prepared in the kitchen, which will eventually affect your health in the long run. So now, kitchen function is only important if you cook and eat at home. Families who don't cook and eat at home, then kitchen feng shui is no longer important. Now, we want to make sure that qi flow is harmonious in our kitchen. It should be be using our kitchen for the entire family. It is very popular now that, you know, we find modern kitchens with islands in them. I'm talking about, you know, that uh, counter in the center of your room. Now, I couldn't stress this enough that you should keep your stove off this area. Having your stove on the kitchen island would expose it to negative forms of qi flow. Now, this is of course okay if you're just using that hot plate to boil some water or cook some instant noodles, but for you know serious cooking, uh, day in, day out, this should be avoided. And if you're already experiencing health issues, your health is not doing too well in the long run, then this could be one of the cause of it. Your food will be negatively affected if your kitchen, the stove, is negatively positioned. I would suggest that your stove be positioned against a wall for stability's sake. A feng shui principle that has developed a life and a legend of its own is not to have fire and water clashing in the kitchen. I'm here to tell you now if there's at least 
three to four feet in between your stove and sink, then there's no need to worry about a fire and water clashing. Now, you should be more concerned if the stove and the washing basin is directly opposite one another. Now, if that's the case, this is called a fire and water clash. A fire and water clash in the kitchen usually signify an imbalance of chi flow, usually affecting the health of the individuals in the house. You'll find that people in the house are often bad-tempered, leading to you know uh, blood pressure problems or heart problems or even too many mental stress that creates other forms of illnesses, for example, tumour or other malignant disease. Don't underestimate this simple feng shui flaw. Now, this has a simple solution. All you need to do is put a console on an island in between the two and then there's no clash. Or if you would, remember, water and fire clash is mitigated by wood element. So go and find some small little uh, potted plants to be positioned in between your stove and your water basin if these two features are very close to one another. Some people say this is where the magic happens. Whether it's for sleeping or resting, this area affects our health vitality and our mood. We know that sleep is a yin activity since it's about stillness and quietness and rejuvenation. So position your headboard against a yin feature like a wall. This is so important and so simple. This will be able to support you for a restful and peaceful sleep. Now, if you position your bed against a yang feature, such as a window, for example, or against a wall with a door, then the yang energy would result in a disrupted sleep. In the long run, this could negatively impact your work performance and your overall health. Everyone has a bed, so what's stopping you from making such simple changes? You might as well make sure it is in a good position. Now, do you feel uneasy having your bed positioned in front of the bedroom door? I have an explanation for that. The old wives' tale is that this mimics sleeping in a coffin. Now, of course, this is totally untrue and it's merely that. The feng shui explanation for this is that the qi entering your room is somewhat clashing directly onto your bed and therefore it disrupts your sleep and therefore you don't sleep well. Solving this is easy, just move your bed so that it's not in direct conflict with the door. And as I said before, feng shui is all about making the most of what is around you. I bet some of you are still skeptical about this at this point, so ask yourself this, are you really missing out on anything if you move your bed a few meters? Come on, right? At most, you are expanding a bit of your energy and using a few minutes of your time. Try it and you might see some difference in your sleep quality for the night. Now, most people look for results. Whether for work or studies, we want the best results that we can produce. Give yourself a boost. Have your study desk positioned with your back towards the wall. This puts a stable yin form behind you which represents the support that you need to advance your career and your, your studies. Now you can maximize the benefits of this by aligning your desk to your personal best or good directions. I bet some of you are complaining right now having the need to move your desk and all that. But let me ask you this question. Is this few minutes or hours you put into reorganizing your home worth giving up for a lifetime of success? If your answer is no, my response is get moving. Consider where your study room door is located. Make sure that you aren't facing it head on when you're sitting down. This puts you directly on the path of rushing chi. Now, if this is unavoidable, simply positioning some furniture or a plant, it will help slow down the crashing chi towards you. One more thing to do is to open up your room windows from time to time. Remember, natural sunlight helps you mitigate negative chi flow and helps you circulate the chi again. Airless rooms means that stagnant chi and stagnation of ideas and your personal growth. Feng Shui is not about ornaments and decorations that boost your luck. So remember that you don't need to buy items or objects. You can't buy good Feng Shui. Good Feng Shui comes from your natural environment. The focus is creating a harmonious home for you with what is readily available in your environment. Now I hope that you find these pointers easy to use and that Feng Shui becomes part of your daily lifestyle. Give it a go and see how changes take place in your life. Why wait? It starts at your home. All it takes is making the most out of what's around you right now. There you go. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Let me know in the comments what other topics you'd like me to film. As always, a share and a like will feed my entire team for one more video. And if you subscribe, my team and I are all going out for pizza tonight. You really want to deprive my team of a pizza feast? Till next time, ciao!